Hello, welcome back to our daily devotions. I'm Pastor David Chu at Trinity Lutheran Church in West Bend. We continue this week to talk about peace. And we read from the eighth chapter of the book of Zechariah, where the prophet writes, These are the things that you shall do. Speak the truth to one another. Render in your gates judgments that are true and make for peace. Do not devise evil in your hearts against one another and have no false oath. For all these things I hate, says the Lord. When I marched with groups after the death of George Floyd, there was one cry that was pretty consistent across most of the groups. No justice, no peace. No matter where you come down on the issues surrounding the events that people were marching about, that's exactly what Zechariah is saying. There can be No peace without justice. Zechariah speaks to a generation returning from the exile who are looking for a new peace, a new beginning, and Zechariah reminds them that peace is tied to truth and justice and caring for one another and challenges them to live out of that reality which God has envisioned for God's people from the very beginning. Zechariah reminds them that the exile came because there was no justice in the land, which led to war and destruction. And he says to them, now how will you choose? How will we choose? The prophet says to us. Recently we have everyone accusing each other of false news, and we're all having trouble believing almost any word that comes out of a leader's mouth. How can there be anything but unrest in that kind of environment? And people in our midst feel that they are not treated with justice and equity. And given the uneven treatment of people of color by the justice system, given the widening gap between rich and poor, given the uneven advancement of those at the top of the corporate ladder and those who are workers, given the suppression of voices of those who speak against the way things are, given the cruel treatment of Palestinians under Israelis, it's hard not to see the lack of justice in the world. Is it any wonder that there's no peace? We can't negotiate peace by ignoring justice. Many people tried to get Martin Luther King Jr. just to back off on his demands, let it go, it'll all work itself out in time. You don't need to cause all this ruckus among us. But in a speech from 1957, King said, I came not to bring this old peace, which is merely the absence of tension. I come to bring a positive peace, which is the presence of justice and the kingdom of God. Peace is not merely the absence of something, but it is the presence of something. If we're truly to be advocates for peace, we also have to be advocates for justice. Now, this isn't the tit-for-tat justice we often talk about in our American political rhetoric. This is a justice that cares for the least and the weakest among us. This may mean things like protest and refusal to participate in evil. Maybe even at times it may mean disobeying the law. Jesus walked into the temple and flipped over the tables. And that was part of a cry of justice he was offering for those who were poor and being abused by the system. Truly, there can be no peace without justice. An example of the connection between justice and peace is what happened in the world just after World War I. The Allied countries placed the blame for World War I squarely on the back of the Germans and determined that they had to pay for all the reparations that needed to go on after the world. They curtailed most of the heavy industry in Germany so that they could never again, the Allies said, create weapons of war. The problem was that all this did was cause the German economy to collapse and everybody in Germany to suddenly feel like they were treated like pariahs, like people who received no justice at all. In the face of that injustice, war seemed the only option when Hitler came to power. 
He offered the Germans a plan to be free from the burdens placed on them, and they jumped at the opportunity. The injustices heaped on the German people led not to peace, but to war. Without justice, those on the edge are left with little option but to rise up in anger and violence. What always amazes me is that they're then blamed for the lack of peace. But the Bible is quite clear that justice and peace go hand in hand. If we are to seek peace, then we also must seek justice for all people. Let us pray. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. And where there is oppression, justice. Amen. Again, I remind everyone this is our last week of daily devotions, but next week we'll start with weekly devotions on Wednesday. So join us for that as well. Go in peace.